Video games are a unique medium to convey philosophical notions. There are many examples of this, which we will see in upcoming episodes of this new little series. In the case of today's video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite video games, which is called Everything. As you can see, this game begins with a sort of Big Bang or reincarnation scenario. At least it appears that way. The player controls a little speck that slowly begins to question its environment and its existence. Soon after, it appears to inhabit a camel in a desert environment. The animations and the graphics are unpolished and a little bit goofy, which will be an immediate turnoff for some people, but this is something which I tend to think fits with this game very well. It's very light-hearted, as we will come to see. As the game progresses, other animals, plants, and objects communicate with the player, uh, this being the primary mode of narration used in the game. The character can make a noise, which they call singing, to let others know that it's alive and well. It can join and dance with other beings of the same species, and can eventually ascend and descend to control other objects as well. There are pieces of audio narration spread throughout the universe, each containing part of a speech made by the philosopher Alan Watts. Watts' philosophy can be described as a sort of mixture between Vedanta, Buddhism, and Taoism, sprinkled with a little bit of science, psychology, and psychedelic ideation. That's certainly a rough description, as he was a quite the prolific writer in his time, and he took inspiration from many different fields of study. But anyways, it seems that the developers of this game were making an attempt to actually allow the player to experience a part of this philosophy firsthand in the form of a video game. One begins as a sort of spark, becomes a camel, obtains the ability to experience the scale of the environment from infinitely smaller points of view as well as infinitely larger points of view until the whole thing folds back in on itself in both directions. It implies the notion of an interconnected universe, or even the idea that a single self or point of consciousness lives in and animates all beings in the universe, but that that self has been convinced by some way or another that it is separate from everything else, and seeks to become whole again and get to know the aspects of itself that it has forgotten. To see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wildflower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. In the case of this game, one can control a shell, dust particles, hair follicles, atoms, plank lengths, basic three-dimensional objects, and descending down far enough can become giant swaths of the universe itself, from clusters of galaxies to solar systems, plants, continents, mountains, and back down to trees, animals, rocks, and insects all while listening to the wonderful narration of an Alan Watts lecture. Another one of the interesting things about this game is the autoplay feature. Uh, this simply allows you to let go of the controls and allow the experience to drive itself. Audio narration pieces will still be picked up and played. The player will automatically ascend and descend making the gaming experience more into a movie or a screensaver that can be taken control of at any time. 
as with most video games, one must complete levels and quests, defeat bosses, unlock achievements, beat top scores, and things like that. But in this case, none of that really applies. It would almost be easier to consider everything to be a piece of interactive art in some sense. Now this video game is an obvious example of philosophy being injected into this form of media. And that's why I decided to go with it for the first entry into the series. If anything, I'd be happy with simply showcasing this little work of art in hopes that other people may decide to give it a play for themselves. So I'll see you guys next time.